Hi, Amy, Jordan, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. Happy oh, summer. I, it's <laughs> such an honor, really. I've been following you. You are an award-winning author, speaker, choreographer, and, um, you tran and transform trauma into transformation. And you help people get over trauma in their life, not only by helping them with what knowledge that you have, but also sharing your story, which is phenomenal. I wish we had hours and hours to talk about everything that you're about and everything that you've been through. And I don't even know where to begin, but I just maybe yeah. first of all, share with the audience a little bit about your story and how it started. And I know it started young. Uh, well, thank you for having me, first of all. Thank you for all you do for the community. It's amazing. And uh, I appreciate all your work and support and all of that. We need as much of that as we can get right now. Yes, we do. <laughs> you know, we all have these different kinds of journeys. And um, mine has been uh, dramatic because it just seems to be my nature go big or go home so you know i have type 1 diabetes uh, since i was four years old and this was way before the internet and instagram and a lot of the technologies and information we have today so it was it was very sort of shameful you're gonna get sick and die kind of mentality in the 70s at least in my family and my family chose denial, which I don't recommend if you are a parent with a child with diabetes, let's deal with it. Mm -hmm. It's a lot easier now. You have a lot more resources and not more ways, you know. So that caught up to me in my early 20s. I was uh, had pursued a dance career and an eating disorder that went along with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it caught yes, me. yes, I can imagine. Yeah, that too. Uh, bulimia and diabetes is not a happy combination. I don't recommend it. Uh, it cost me a fair amount of my sight. So I had to stop driving in 1992 at the age of 21. That was my first moment to reinvent and unknowingly transform trauma into triumph at such a young age. I was like, wow, so much for a dance career. I can't see in the dark. I have no peripheral vision. The one eye is blind. The other eye, I have no uh, peripheral vision so I had to really already think okay what what now and at you know when you're so young and you're still trying to figure out who what where when how why and how to pay the rent and okay. so that yeah yeah that journey was um intense and I got involved doing advocacy trying to support other kids at the time, and I came back to New York, I was living in Los Angeles, uh, where I had gone to pursue my dance. This was in the Rhythm Nation, Blonde Ambition, Michael Jackson tour days. Oh, yes, definitely. It, yeah, it was that era of commercial dance. If you don't know what those things are, you should Google them because, you know, it was a really extraordinary moment in entertainment as things were changing. MTV was new. Um, so, I came back to New York in 2002 and was trying to get my act together and really uh, continuing with this diabetes education in the schools to help kids understand that the causes they make today are going to affect them tomorrow. Yeah. And yeah, and then my, my other big moment to really step back and re- start came in 2009, uh, May 1st, I was crossing the street in New York City and I found myself face down on the pavement, having no idea what was going on. Oh. I had no feeling on my right side. And it wasn't long before paramedics were there telling me they were going to get me out from under the tire of a New York City Express bus, which had run over me and pinned me on the ground. Oh, Amy. Wow. So don't try this at home. <laughs> don't try this. Oh, <laughs> No, no, no. People are like, I feel like I got hit by a bus. I'm like, eh, no, you don't. No, you don't. Well, Not exactly. No, there, was something, <laughs> there was something you told yourself that night that I read. Yeah. Um, and I think you're doing that right now in your life. 
Hi, I'm, you know, I practice SGI Buddhism, I chant Nam Yom Harenge Kyo, and as an SGI Buddhist, I just immediately started chanting, you know, it's the law of attraction, the law of the universe, that is Nam Yom Harenge Kyo, and I didn't know what else to do, I started to chant, and, you know, my first thought was like, holy moly, I didn't know what was happening, but I knew it was bad. And then my second thought was like, well, if I'm alive tomorrow, there'll be a victory dance. In Buddhism, everything's about creating victory, right? From our, not, there's no victim, you know, there's no whatever happens, we have to transform it and create value from it. And that way there's never a reason to be fearful or... Mm -hmm. You know, we're human beings, I have emotions, of course, but um, there's no underlying sense of why me or no pity party. So long story short, uh, first hospital want to amputate my leg, my right leg. I said, no, pay attention to your guts. And <laughs> I wow. got a second opinion. Yeah. That's powerful. I demanded, they came in and said, you know, this is just too, I was crushed I had no you know the bones were crushed the skin was gone you could see down into the tissue and they said you're just not going to come back from this you have diabetes but the truth was I wasn't in a medical facility equipped to manage this kind of trauma and they were just doing to the best that they could do which wasn't in my case good enough so <laughs> I got a second opinion. I got transferred to, you know, a trauma hospital. I spent months in a burn intensive care unit. Don't recommend that either. <laughs> Not a place you ever want to find yourself, but I had amazing care there here in New York and they rebuilt me 20 surgeries later. I'm still rehabilitating. Um, I'm functioning. I'm walking. Uh, I did dance again. Actually, I watched tomorrow. you. Yes. Yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> and such an inspiration. And you even said that you went with your dance company, a dance. Do you have your own dance company? I have my own company, the Victory Dance Project, that started five years uh, after the accident to really exemplify the mission of making the impossible possible with the power of movement. I'm fortunate being in New York and having the, the resources I did. The, attract some just amazing dancers, Alvin Ailey, American Dance Theater, and Dance Theater of Harlem, and Juilliard, and Hamilton, and so you think you oh, can dance with so me. You can't feel like, I was like, oh my god, I'm so intimidated by them. They're so amazing. Like, they're the best of the best, so it was really wow. Wow. on hiatus now with COVID and whatnot, so. But you were the choreographer for this, the, your, your own company, and then you would you would get dancers to come in and dance for you, and then you were participating mm -hmm. as well, correct? Uh, I participated in one performance, <laughs> one night only, um, on June fifteenth. So tomorrow will be four years. Twenty seventeen, I danced. Uh, we honored my doctors. We honored Cheetah Rivera, and that the process of that performance is now the subject of a, an internationally acclaimed documentary, Amy's Victory Dance, directed by Michael Jackson's choreographer. So oh, they made wow. a movie about that whole process of my getting back to the stage and uh, everything that was going on around that at the time. It's so exciting. I can't wait to watch that documentary. And, you know, your story is just so so touching and your attitude is so amazing. And how you like you said, and now it does make sense, but I wanna ask you more questions about that. I know that Buddhism really helped you not, not take it as if why me or poor me? And you were instantly started looking for solutions mm -hmm. and, and different things that you can do to um, with what you had. At least that's what I saw from your story and what you just said that's really, really powerful for so many people out there that have dealt with really challenging things. And I, I have to say, yours is up there as far as one thing after the other. And more, a lot of people give up, a lot of people give up. And, and I want to hear your message. And, and I'm going to ask you a couple of questions about courage. Mm -hmm. And, you know, first of all, I probably, I know the, I probably the answer to this, but I'm going to extend this question. Do in the new moment in time, right now, in this moment, 
do you see yourself as courageous? More courageous than I have been. I'm getting more comfortable with it. And I was just sharing with you, I have a situation going on right now. <laughs> And I haven't gotten an answer to something that is just completely ridiculous. And if I don't get an answer in like the next hour, I'm backing out of the deal because I don't need to cow down. You know, I was really chanting about that too, but you know, I, and especially as women, like, I think we're like, oh, it's okay. I'll just, no, I gave you everything that you, I paid all the money you asked for. I signed on the dotted line. I got you all the paperwork. If you can't do your part, then I'll go somewhere else. Bam. And you know, that again, that's having faith that the right thing will present itself. I don't need to act in fear, you know, but uh, to me right now, this is a justice issue because the people holding it up are just like to be, you know, stronghold things for no real reason. And it's disrespectful. So I feel like it's getting easier. We're I'm talking a lot about now as we're coaching more about getting comfortable with boundaries and saying no and standing up for yourself and not being afraid of what happens. And if things fall off, just trust it's okay, whether it's personal, yeah. professional, having to let go of things, you, you know, even if it's painful, you can still love someone and still know that it's not healthy. So but it takes practice, you know. It does it just, take practice. Yeah. It's easier the more you do it. So that is an act, a huge act of courage in my book um, that of life <laughs> is that you stand up for things that are important to you. And yeah. so women, we have had a hard time doing that and, and giving ourselves permission to do that. And it's and and to really be ourselves and and that is a courageous act. And I love how you described that. And you took it into a whole different, I, you know what I love even more about this is that you, you didn't talk about, oh, I'm courageous because I, I, I overcame my injuries, my being blind, um, all these different things that have happened to me. No, you are just talking about you standing up for yourself as a person in life and, for, and things yeah. like that. And you have all these other stories you could have said, oh yeah, I'm courageous because of this, this, and this, but what you chose to focus on right in this moment was that. And I thought that was really powerful. It happens to be going on right now. So I was just chanting. I was like, no, this is not okay. I, you know. Yes. So it's okay. This just is how we're going to create value and change the systems in the world. You know, to me, I look at it as a bigger sense of mission of, how can I create value in the world and, you know, be an example? We can't cow down because somebody on a board of directors somewhere wants to make our life miserable to make themselves feel better. You know, I'll go somewhere else. Exactly. Exactly. Period. Yeah. And know that it's all going to be all right. Yeah. It's going to be fine. If you stand up for you, it takes guts. It takes guts. But know that the outcome will be is no matter what happens, yeah. that's most important. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Um, well, congratulations on that. We're, I know we're dealing with that yeah. right moment. <laughs> and um, something else I want, I know that you have, um, you, you want to give back as a coach, as a speaker, as an author, as a mm -hmm. filmmaker. I mean, they did a documentary on you. Um, so tell us how you can help people out there and what you've learned from your own experience and how courage might play a part in all of that? I have, well, the book obviously is a guidebook based on five steps of D-A-N-C-E and transforming trauma to triumph because there was a lot of focus on rebuilding my physical body, which was very necessary at the time because I was crushed like a pancake yeah. and a lot of infection, a lot of things that come with that kind of traumatic injury but then it's like okay we'll go on about your life I'm like well I can't go back to my life how it was like I can barely walk down the street so you know a lot of my focus is in supporting women especially to whatever you're going through I get it 
there's a solution, you know, it's not going to be quick or easy. We don't have to like it, but we can move on from it. It's very real here. There's no like, oh my God, it's like a golden, no, it's not a golden memory. I still don't like having a visual impairment. I still don't like not being able to wear the cute shoes, but with that, now how can I move on and be happy? So there's an intro coaching program launching soon and the movie we're working on distribution and no I think it's more and more important in this moment in time to really stand up for ourselves to stand up for justice which I feel like is what's going on with me right now with this particular situation in its small little way like you know to have the courage to you know, it can still be nervous. The conversations are still not comfortable, but the alternative for me at this point is worse. So, you know, like we said, it gets easier and easier the more you do it, like anything. And the more you do it and then you get a result, it's like, oh, okay, I got through that. You know, whether it's my accident or relational things or family things or, oh, okay, whatever happens, it's gonna be okay. So. I'm yep. not going to be back on the ground pinned under the tower of a bus in an ICU. So right. you've been there. You know, <laughs> we've we've done that. We're <laughs> <laughs> that's over with. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. <laughs> I think I think it's true that sometimes, and and maybe that is does help you be more fearless, maybe or bold or courageous because you've been through the worst. It's like, oh, what else could you know what. I can handle anything. I've handled that. I lived through that and, you know, I can handle anything. But I think that a lot of times we, our fear gets in the way where we, and, and it's so big, we listen to it. We think it's so big, mm -hmm. so fearful of what might happen that we can't even move. We can't even, you know, make one step and 98% of what we fear doesn't happen. Even isn't even real. It's our own mental gymnastics. Yes. Yes. And it's pretty, pretty interesting what our minds will do, isn't it? I mean, you know, I think if we choose courage or I don't know what other word you would use um, over fear or doubt or what mm -hmm. might happen, you know, the big, what, you know, what if, if I stand up what to these people, yeah, you know, it might if, work out. Why does it always have to be negative? It might work out better. Yes. And a lot of times it does. Well, you're a great example of that. You really are. Thank you. And I think that our listeners right now, I think there's a lot of people I have listened to over this past year that do struggle with this mind thing that happens. And of course, you and I believe that, you know, we're, we're spiritual beings in this human body, this condition yeah. here, <laughs> and we're fighting it all the time. You know, it's like, um, do I, should I listen to this? Or, you know, it seems so real. What, what it's telling me seems so real. And what I mean, is there one thing that you could tell our audience about that? Because this is a reoccurring message I've been hearing from a lot of people recently. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, just one of the things I learned in my rehabilitative process is just sometimes it's an hour at a time. You know, we don't have to have the whole picture. Just keep going, you know, cut yourself some slack and take a breath and you know what, what do I have to do right now yes that's a great. less overwhelming you know I've learned to do one thing at a time yeah that's how a lot more gets done you know <laughs> I've learned to rest I wasn't feeling well yesterday I usually work on the weekends I was like asleep all day I feel better today imagine mm. Mm. you know so so not get too far ahead of ourselves and yeah. take it one moment, one step at a time, especially if that mind is at a, going crazy and that, you know, your brain is trying to tell you something different. It's slow everything down, yeah. take care of yourself, take one step at a time. And Keep proactive, you know, my business coach does action, you know, 
kills out, and that's not her word, that's my word, but you know, action annihilates anxiety. So when I get anxious, I'm like, okay, for the next 30 minutes, can I pitch some editors? Can I work on this book copy for 30 minutes? You know, and then usually like, okay, I feel good, I got that. And things tend to not take as long as we think. It's the buildup that takes all the time. And then yes. <laughs> doing the actual work is usually not so bad, so. <laughs> No. Oh, I am so with you on this. I have learned that in my own life too. Yeah. That action annihilates anxiety. anxiety. Wow. Powerful. Powerful and so true. Do anything. I go make go make the, you know, go to the garden or do anything. Make your bed. <laughs> do the no, really. Go do the laundry. Go like change your state. I mean, we hear that a lot in NLP and all these other things, but even in Buddhism, you know. Go chant. It'll raise your life. Nam yo renge kyo. The vibration of the kyo is like exercise. It raises your physiology so you're lighter and happier. And then you can go out in the world in a better, able to deal with what comes at us. Because the stuff is still going to come. Like yep. the problems don't yep. go away. Buddhism is not magic. It's the opposite, you know. But then how do we use those obstacles as a benefit and have appreciation for them. And, you know, they don't overtake us. Yeah. We're never a victim of circumstance. We can always make a different choice. Mm -hmm. I believe that hundred percent too. What great, we set great boundaries. We can learn to set boundaries. If we need to say no, we can say no. If we need to rest more, we can, you know, living with a chronic condition is hard. If you're living with a chronic condition, I applaud you. It's a lot of work. Yes. A lot of days I don't feel well. Okay, that's not a reflection to me. It's just a fact. Mm -hmm. How do I manage that so that it doesn't take me down? So, you know. Great, great advice for anybody out there. And I know there's a lot of people that are in that situation right now. So thank you. Thank you for being welcome. an incredible example. <laughs> you, you know, you don't just talk what, you know, your wisdom, you, you live your wisdom. And I try. That's <laughs> we got, it's really powerful. And I would, I would want to go to someone um, if I had trauma or if I had issues that I'm trying to get past or, or through from a person that's been through it. And so yeah. that's why I think it's really important um, if people come to you it's, and know that how powerful that is. You've been through it and you're living through it. And you are transforming your life. You have transformed your life. And now you're transforming other people's lives. And you're helping people dance. And, you know, that's one thing. I, I, when I feel sad, I love to dance. And I would much rather dance. Right. You know, my happy dance. Do anything to get my body moving. Move your victory dance. Move your body. You know, yes. move your yes. That's key. Yes. Yeah, you can you. join our world. If you go to Amy Jordan Speaks, you can join our, our little world. And... We'd love it. So anyone listening right now, join um, Amy Jordan Speaks. AmyJordanSpeaks.com. And you'll find all of our information. And we'll, we'll make sure we put that on our video when we, we're posting this and so that you can find it and reach out to her. And she is a huge example and inspiration for all of us. And so make sure that um, you look into your own life and see um, how you can use her wisdom so that you can be more transformative in your own life and, and live a happy life no matter what's going on. So yeah. thank you so much for, for, for sharing your story with all of us. Um, I'm inspired and I look forward <laughs> to staying in touch with you too. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. <laughs> Have a wonderful day. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Take care, Amy. We'll be in touch.